Hello. Thank you for coming. You are very welcome to our exhibition. I would like to take a few minutes to tell you about the exhibition and the work of the project so far. After that, please do feel free to stay as long as you like and talk to as many people as you can. The Great Northern Railway Ireland, the GNRI, was an amalgamation of Irish railway companies created in 1876. At its height, the GNR covered a large area of Ireland between Dublin, Belfast, Derry and Bundorn. For Dundalk, a provincial town located in the northeast coast of Ireland, the opening of the railway from Dublin in 1849 and from Belfast in 1850 placed the town on the main line between two of Ireland's principal cities. Further railway links opened through Clonus to Derry by 1859 and to Greenore in 1873. Other routes served linked Dundalk to Clonus, Armagh, Carrickmacross and Belturbet amongst many others. All of these were of strategic importance to Dundalk and the wider cross-border region. This collection of photographs captures something of the character of the GNR in Dundalk Barrack Street, something which is appreciated by those who worked for the GNR or had the pleasure of travelling on its trains, but which is perhaps less familiar to people outside the area. We are in the parlour of Great Northern Haven. The parlour is part of a housing project that has been specially designed to help people live independently while having suitable support to hand. The development of these houses led to the Netwell Centre, part of the Dundalk Institute of Technology, taking an interest in gathering the memories of railway people. So Dr Lucia Carraher got together a group to take the work forward. Three railway men have been at the centre of the project. You may recognise the three in this picture. Brenda McQuaid, Lenny Hattrick and Davy McArdle. The project is supported by the Peace 3 programme and managed by the special EU programmes body by the Community Relations Council Pobal Consortium. Our link to all of that is by way of Diversity Challenges whose Wild Lindening is on the right of this group. The interviews for the project were done by Charles Freel and that's him on the left of the group. The project has concentrated on interviewing railway men and women from around the Dundalk area. In doing so, we have heard from just about every part of the Great Northern System, from the banks of the Foyle and the Atlantic Breakers of Bundoran to the delights of Newcastle and other delights of places like Portadown or Belfast. We have heard about hard times and happy times, war time and peace time, from getting a start on the railway through promotions and transfers to being paid off, made redundant or just retired. Yes, all human life happened on the Great Northern. Today's exhibition concentrates on Barrack Street. It was a very important location, halfway on the main line between Dublin and Belfast and with direct access to a large swathe of the Northern and, of course, the Dundalk near and Green Ore. This map of Barrack Street dates back to 1908. That's St Alphonsus Road running up the left-hand edge of the map. There are four important places highlighted in pink. At the bottom is number 7. This was the original engine shed of the Dundalk and Enniskillen Railway. The famous Great Northern local engineer Charles Clifford started his career here. Halfway up the map on the left is number 4. This was a sawmill and creosoting works where sleepers were cut to size and then impregnated with hot creosote under great pressure. Just to the right of the sawmill is the goods store number 3. This is where goods were stored before being loaded into wagons or, more usually, kept before they could be delivered to the customer. It was a very busy place. Towards the top of the map is the building numbered one. This began life as the main works for the Dundalk and Inniskillen Railway. They even built steam engines here. Later it became famous as the Sugar Store, which survives today as the Health Services offices. Of all the buildings and tracks shown here, only the rebuilt sugar store survives. This map dates from 1938 and shows us the location of the sawmill and the goods store more clearly. Today the only landmark is the Redemptorist Church across the road from the depot. The next slide is a picture taken from St Alphonsus Road Bridge looking towards the engine shed. The engine on the left is taking water from the water tank while the engine on the right seems to be making up a goods train, probably for Clonus. There is much of interest here, 
The Irish North engine shed is in the middle of the picture, with part of a steam rail motor coach on the ground in front of it. Over to the left, an old goods van body has been grounded too. Maybe you know the man to the right of the first engine. We do know the man in the next picture. Standing on the tender in this picture is Jimmy Dernan. He died sadly, just a short time ago, but we were very fortunate in being able to interview him. During the 1950s, many soccer teams from various parts of the railway around Dundalk played for the Wilson Cup. This was a perpetual challenge cup sponsored by H.E. Harry Wilson, who was the works manager and assistant mechanical engineer. The cup itself has recently returned to Dundalk after the death of one of Harry's sons and is about to be restored for exhibition in the museum at the station. It is held here by Des Casey. Barrick Street had a team in the competition and this is the team from 1951. We do have the names but we'd love to hear more about the competition itself. Maybe you can help. The Barrick Street team won the competition and this is a close-up of their shield at the base of the stand. The year was 1958 and that might have been the last year of the competition unless you know better. Our researchers have also included the Dundalk, Newry and Greenore line. And this is a view from a cab of a train coming across the metals towards Key Street Station. Away to the left is just a glimpse of an engine shunting the docks. We have one or two railway men who work the lines on the docks, but we would like to meet more. Maybe you can help. This was the view looking north from the footbridge at Key Street back in 1930. The station building on the left is still there today, although now disused. On the right, beyond the signal, the line to the docks diverges to the right. Nowadays, a new road slices through here. Back in 1924, we see one of the new Garda Chicana patrolling the platform while a Grenoble tank engine leads a typical train for Grenoble. Yes, the guards really were that tall in 1924. This is just one of the pictures where we would like to know more about who the people are. Can you help? Another view of Key Street from the street. Note Lockington's coal officers on the right through the gates. It would be interesting to know more about them too. This is a view looking the other way through the gates with that remarkable footbridge. It allowed people to get across the lines when the gates were closed to road traffic. We've heard some stories of boys climbing about the ironwork in a way that the designers did not envisage. Maybe there are stories in your family about these gates. This is another typical green ore train. It has come from the junction station and crossed the main line at the square crossing before skirting the edge of Barrack Street Yard and looping around to head for Key Street Station and beyond. The engine is number 3, named Dundalk, seen here on 20th of May 1949. We jump forward to 1970 for the next shot. And this brings us back to St Alphonsus Road. A lot has happened in the years between the last photo that we saw taken from here. The Green Ore Line closed on the last day of 1951. The Irish North Line closed in 1957, although some of it survived for goods only use until the end of 1959. Steam shunting engines disappeared about 1961 and were replaced by diesel electrics like the one seen here to the left of the water tank. With the closure of many lines, Barrack Street Depot grew in importance. It became a railhead for a huge area, from just north of Drogheda and through a wide sweep of Cavan and Monaghan. At one time there were more than 90 lorries and their crews based here. Some of these were regularly seen north of the border too, in places like Inniskillen or Armagh or Belfast. Closer to home there were local deliveries that were drawn by horse. Note the modern pneumatic tyres. This was one of several pictures taken by Paul Cavanagh on their last day. Meanwhile, Back in Barrack Street Depot, there was other modernisation. Container traffic was the way forward, and this was a view from the gantry crane taken by Jim Williams in November 1994. 
you can get your bearings from the goods store on the right and from the offices on the extreme left, which back on to St Alphonsus Road. Below us, two 121 class General Motors locos are shunting container wagons. The goods store is no longer rail connected and the site of the sawmill and creosoting works is now more sidings for the gantry crane. This is slightly more to the left and you can see the windmill at the top left of the picture with the offices below. Thank you for letting us have such great pictures Jim. This picture will give you some idea of how much employment the railway brought to this part of Dundalk. We are keen to put names to faces and there's a place on the displays for you to do just that. Thank you. This picture was taken on the St Alphonsus Road bridge over the line on the night before it was demolished. This is what the sugar store used to look like. And from the same spot. And this is what it looks like today. Apart from the sugar store and the water tank behind it, there is little to remind us of what Barrack Street Yard used to look like. Apart that is from some buffer stops like this one sitting in splendid isolation. With your help though we can build up a lasting memorial of memories and stories, maps and pictures. It is a rich history that deserves to be recorded and we are grateful to all those who have contributed so far. The project team very much hope that you will contribute to the work and we would love to hear from you. In the meantime, we very much hope that you will enjoy today's exhibition.